Have you ever heard the phrase, those who know not real suffering know not real joy? Have you heard something like that before? Um, do you think that's true? Do we have to know suffering in order to know real joy? I don't know how true that is, but certainly in the Christian faith, suffering and death uh, has grave significance, no pun intended. Suffering and death is presented, especially in the New Testament passage for today, as a catalyst, uh, as, a, as the main ingredient for life, like a seed that must be buried in the ground in order for it to sprout into life. So let's take a look at this passage in Romans 6 together. Romans 6, verses 3 to 11. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Ready? We were therefore with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. All right, let's go back to the first a verse of this passage. Um, it says, don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? What does that mean? I mean, we, we get baptized to have a new life, not in order to die, right? And yet this verse makes it seem like the purpose of baptism is death, so that we can die and, and be buried with Christ. It says in the, in the following verses, it goes on and about, on about what it, how important it is that we are buried, that we are crucified with Christ in other verses, it says. So um, it, I think there is a step that we want to skip in this process. We want to go from being sinners to bliss. We don't want the, the step in the middle of s sacrifice and death. We, we, we don't like it so much that we, I think our, our Christianity as of late have really emphasized the, the grace of God that gives us salvation for free. And uh, we don't, there's no, uh, uh, nothing that we have to do to be saved. In fact, I believe that. In fact, that is true. However, salvation is free, but the life we live in Christ is a, uh, it's a life of calling from God for us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus to suffer and to die in order to be resurrected. And that's what this verse is talking about, the life with Christ. How can you resurrect someone who is not dead? 
Death is a necessity for resurrection. And if we are to be resurrected with Christ into the new life in God, we must first die, is what this passage is saying. And that's why baptism is so significant. Because being underwater, being buried, dying to our old self, as this passage says, is the necessary part to be raised up into the new life. That's what baptism really signifies. It signifies the Easter weekend of, of the crucifixion of Christ that we join in. Yes, Christ died for our sins, and through his blood we are saved, but he also asks us to experience the joy of the resurrection, which can only come if we are dead. So, is death a catalyst for life? Absolutely. If we are to experience the new life in Christ, through the resurrection, we must first die. If we want to be first, we must become last. If we want to save ourselves, we must lose ourselves. And I'm so glad that the deacons asked to have the communion on, on the Easter weekend because you know what communion is, right? Communion is rebaptism for the saints. You know, we, do, we get to do this once a quarter. Some churches do it every week. And, and we really need that. We really need that experience of dying with Christ to be resurrected again. We need that rebaptism over and over again to remind ourselves because we are so forgetful, aren't we? We always go to the garage to get something and when we get there, we don't, what, why am I here? And that's what happens to us all the time in the busyness of life. That's why gathering together to be reminded of this is so important. And this once a year celebration is just a big celebration of what we celebrate every week, every day, every moment. Do I have time to say one more thing about death, uh, suffering and death? Do I? Okay, two minutes. <clears throat> Okay, so we know what, what the, the, the um, purpose of death is. You must die to be resurrected. What is the purpose of suffering? Have you asked this before? Suffering seems so needless. Why must we suffer? What is the purpose of suffering? This is what I think. God does not cause suffering. But... God uses something so terrible in our lives as something useful. Have you experienced that in your life? So as terrible as suffering is, and, and, and when you're in the middle of it, it's agonizing, it's painful. You don't want to go through it. And God suffers with you, by the way. Those of you that have asked the question of, where are you, God, in my suffering? Uh, why have you abandoned me? Why couldn't you stop and prevent this from happening? I want to tell you that God weeps with you in your suffering. He suffers with you. And I can testify to that, uh, having a sick child. I, 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 I want to suffer instead of him. Because I feel like the, the, the mental agony is, is, is so, so intense. So God, I want you to know that. God suffers with you in your suffering. Uh, but what is the purpose of it? What is the purpose? Why must we? Well, there, there might not be a reason for it, but I think what God does is he uses suffering as a form of death to, to make you eligible for resurrection. Suffering and pain, is a, is a, it only exists in the imperfect life where there is death. Suffering is a, um, is a sort of a mirror image of our, uh, our mortality. It is a indication of our frailty. It is a, uh, it, 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 it talks about the imperfect life and it is a form of death. And so what I'm telling you is, 
Those of you that suffer and think this is for naught, this is needless, I, I think it is needless still. But God, in his wisdom, uses your suffering to make you a better candidate for the resurrection. You know, uh, when I was uh, a long time ago, when I was waiting in, in line for um, the new iPhone to come out before the store opened, we all lined up to, and I waited for hours. And when the store opened, the guy came out and said, we're sorry, the delivery was not made and we don't have the iPhones. But I know that you guys waited so long since the crack of dawn, so we're going to give you vouchers to get free iPhones when it comes. Actually, that did not happen. Uh, <laughs> you're like, where was that? Why wasn't I there? No, that did not happen. But what really does happen, I think, in, in reality of the universe is those of you that go through immense amount of suffering in this life, I think, I think God says, you know what? Yeah, here's a voucher. Here's a voucher for you for the resurrection of that joy with Christ, that, that new life in Christ. You know, you know I, I know you're co totally confused why, why I am giving you this voucher, God says. I, I, I know that you're thinking, what, what is this? What, why, why? And you don't think that you deserve it because in your suffering, you were perhaps angry with God. Perhaps you, 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 maybe you, uh, did not get along with God for so many years. But I want to tell you, God says, I count your suffering as death. And that death is enough to make you a candidate for the resurrection. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I, I really believe that. Um, and you can see it all throughout the Bible. You know, like uh, pr uh, a prostitute, Rahab. A prostitute was considered righteous. Who else was there? Um, there was Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And, and, and he, he had a change of, change of life. All these um, uh, unexpected sinners receiving the voucher from God. The thief on the cross he received a voucher. For what? What did he do? What did he do in his life? And I think God says, look, those, to, to all of you suffer in this world, and perhaps if this is true, because everyone suffers, perhaps we are all eligible for the resurrection. Wouldn't that be nice? Amen.